Hello. Now we are going to look a little deeper into Google Classroom. Notice I've created a demo class for you over here with a section of 01. And I'm just going to click on that to get into the class itself. Remember, if you want to return to the higher level to move to another class, your main menu remains accessible from the upper left hand corner. First of all, notice that you've got a default look to your page. We'll come back to this later and we'll change it. And Google Classroom, one of the real advantages or positives of this is the simplicity of the system. It makes it very, very easy to use once you get comfortable with it. And there's enough complexity, there are enough options that you can do pretty much anything you want. So here you go. There are three main sections. Stream students and about. We'll look at each in turn. So we are currently on the stream section and this is where you post assignments, messages, quizzes, anything that you want students to interact with or most things you want students to interact with get posted right here. You would do that through this button and we'll go into that in depth in another video. And the other options are simply to view all which would mean all of your work. Right now it's going to have a little summary of work that's due soon. Things that are associated with a particular date that that's coming up. But if you want to see all of it you can click here. You can see there's no work for me right now in that this is showing me the work from demo class. But if I wanted to I could switch to my Google Classroom or my other classes and you can see oh there is some work that's due. And this was due way back in January 2015, so this is very, very late. Or you can see it as in all classes combined. So this is showing you a combined view. It is showing you the class that's associated with here and the date. Let me come back into my demo class. And there we go. There's also an option here to show deleted options. So if I were to turn that on, you would see that I had previously created an assignment in this class and that I have deleted it. So unless this is turned on, you won't see it. Now students won't see it regardless. Only teachers will see it. It will be deleted permanently in 30 days. So you can see that it's gone. But there's not much you can do with it. And after 30 days, you won't even see that it was ever there. Okay, those are the main functions of this stream, and this is an area you'll be using constantly pretty much, so we'll come back to this in more detail. Second tab is for students. This is where you would see your students listed, and you can access their assignments directly from here if you like, although you can access them from the stream view as well. It's also where you could invite students. So you can see that I have some email addresses in there but that you could invite students directly if they're a part of your domain. Now note that there's also a code on the left and this is the easiest way to have students enter your class. Simply give them this code, have them so go to Google Classroom signing in with their district Gmail account. And When they go to Classroom they're going to have that option to join a class. If they put this code in they will be in your class. So one thing that we do is we have especially um, at the elementary level. We have all the teachers create classes, provide the codes to a computer teacher, and in just a couple of minutes, uh, students sit down in class and join all the classes they need to join. You can disable this, and it's not a bad idea. Once it's disabled, students can no longer join, so you won't get any accidental joins because somebody has mistyped something. Okay, or you won't get people you don't want in your class. So once your roster is full and you have all your students, not a bad idea to disable it. You can always re-enable it. Just know that this code will change. So you can't provide them the old code, but they still will wind up in the same class. Guardian email summaries. This is a very new feature where guardians can receive a summary of the student's work in class announcements. And you can actually see an example here if you'd like. Let's go take a look at that. 
So you can see right there's a sample. This is the type of thing that they would be receiving an email. At this point in time, in um, late September of 2016, this is a brand new feature. And I can turn that on. I can have all my classes have the availability of Guardian email, uh, Guardian email summaries, or I can do it just for this class, and I can add the class over here. For right now, I'll say no thanks, but just know that that's a nice feature. I would just clear it with um, the processes and restrictions that might exist in your district. Okay, also, if you look over on the right, you can define what students can do in this class. So they can post and comment, or they can only comment, or only the teacher can post or comment. So if you pick that third option, it's a very static kind of site. You push out information to students. Here they can give you comments on things, but they can't post their own work, and here of course they can post their own work. Generally, it's this setting that you would use because you want to use this to give assignments and receive assignments from students. And students may be creating things. You, you may be sharing a document with them that they work on, but they may also be creating things in their Google space and sharing them directly where they are their creators. And that's, that's actually a nice way to work, a convenient way to work, but you would need this setting for that to occur. If we have students in here, this would become active and we could email their garden guardians and we'll look at these things once we register a student the about section is a way to present general information to the class so it has the class name here you can give it a description Okay, that is optional. You don't have to do that. You can also give an optional location if the class is actually meeting. It has a link to the Google Drive folder and a link to the calendar. So here you're going to see the calendar in its uh, Google Classroom view where if you use this link, you'd actually go to the calendar in your Google Drive. So you can see here that a demo class one has been created. This calendar has been created in my space. I didn't do anything to um, create this outside of create the class in Classroom. Let me close those up. And you can add class materials here. And this is a good place to put materials that aren't date sensitive. So if I have uh, class rules, if I have rubrics or something that, like a writing rubric that's going to be used throughout the year, and I want them to have easy access to it, I may post those things here and just teach the class that certain types of things are going to be available through the About tab. Now the last thing I would like to do in this particular tutorial is look at your general theme. Like right now, this came with the class when I created it. But you can use this button over on the right to actually select a theme. And there are a variety of pictures that are in there. I will choose this one. And notice that not only did the picture change, but the actual color scheme changed to match. That's what makes it a theme. There are also patterns. So if you just want a simple, see what they have, simple repetitive pattern, you can use that. Again, color scheme changes to match it. And the other option you have is to upload a photo. So I've saved one to my desktop. Just be aware that if you are selecting a photo, notice this is a very large photo. This is um, 10 megabytes, so I could have gotten a smaller one. But that if you do select a photo for upload, the photo has to be large enough to fill that space. So I can move this around, which is essentially a crop, change the size of that, 
although the proportions must stay the same. And then when I select it, my picture will become the main picture. If that picture was too small, it would repeat, and that looks awkward. So you're really looking for something that's got a fair amount of width to it in pixels. Okay, those are the basics, and when we come back, we're going to have a student join a class, and we're going to look at assignments.